All right, in this video, Crypto and I reconcile our differences on the tree. The giving tree? <laughs> this tree didn't give nothing. It only took. <laughs> oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> Welcome to the Codex Cantina, where I am Una. And I am the Stump Crypto. <laughs> if you are new to this channel, we go heavy into detail into the books and short stories that we read, trying to bring out some of the themes and interpretations. If you're down for literature discussions like that, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, we start off with publication information. And according to the bibliography on Wikipedia, this was a published our bowl in 1939. And it was translated by Richard and Lucia Cunningham. Now, this is a heavily anthologized work, and rightfully so. It is a stalwart of the Latin literature. I'm very happy to be doing this one today. And I want to go over some history of Maria Luisa Bombal herself. She was a Chilean author who moved to Paris at the age of eight, where she finished her studies. Now, upon completing her literature and philosophy degrees, she actually returned to Chile afterwards. Now, what I want to talk about is her marriages thereupon after. Upon returning from South America, she married a pioneer in civil aviation. I'm going to call him Sanchez, who did not share her interest in literature. And soon enough, Bombal began to suffer from depression and attempted suicide. In 1933, she married the painter Jorge Larco, who had an eye for men instead of women and formed a marriage blanc, which obviously did not work out. With the help of friends, Bombal fled back to the country in Argentina, and in 1937 she returned to Chile due to the uh, beginning of her divorce trial. Now, in 1939 is when she wrote El Arbol, going through these three different relationship kind of failures, challenges, I'll say. And in 1941, af after it was published, she actually acquired a revolver, went to the hotel where her first husband was, and shot him in the arm. So our, our lady, violence wasn't something that was segregated just to her stories, I guess I should say. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that she's struggling in her own personal life with violence and communication, and she's going to write what she knows about, and she does a really good job of that. Yeah, very, very interesting story for that. So what we're going to do is do a quick plot breakdown just to make sure we're on the same page and a recap for you, and then we're going to go into our detailed analysis and discussion on the piece and some of the meanings behind it. So for plot, Brigida goes to a concert hall. She's not formally educated and experiences the music, which causes her to have intense flashbacks. She recalls her times with her ex, now ex-husband, and she describes him as cold and obsessed with going to work. He doesn't show her any warmth, and she recalls her boudoir that offered her some comfort in a rubber tree outside that protected their house from the elements and raging storms. At some point, Brigida is fed up and cuts off communication with her husband, Luis, and they become separated, and her rubber tree is cut down. End plot. Very sad story, but good. Yeah. yeah, and it's this is an ambitious piece. Like, I'm telling you, I had to read this a couple times to really get the meaning, to really get the feel. I, I didn't feel comfortable with it, I would say. And, and let's see let's see where our discussion goes today. I want to start off with talking about these musical movements. These were really interesting to me because it kind of opens up. You'll, you'll notice the story is segmented into three different parts in the same way that a lot of classical music is separated into three different parts. Yeah, this is something that I kind of struggle with, but I believe that it is very much following kind of that crescendo through a musical piece. Hitting a climax, sure. I mean, stories definitely have like, you know, like that turning point, right? So this opens up with Mozart leading Brigida through a mosaic of her life. If you are newer to music or if you don't have the biggest background, a lot of times classical pieces had these uh, overtures in the beginning, which kind of demoed or took sections of, of the music. And uh, I, I don't totally know its purpose, but I've always thought of it as a way to kind of introduce people to motifs that are coming along. And that's exactly what she's doing as she starts to step through this piece. We kind of get her in her youth. She's wearing white, sitting by a calm brook as, you know, she's meeting Luis, amongst other things. And we get a lot of symbols of lilies, virginity, and flower in her younger state. So when it comes to music, one of the ways to think about it, as we went from Baroque to classical to Romanticism, 
each section kind of was reacting to how music used to previously previously be. It's a way of the present reacting to the past. And you'll see in the same way, that's Bombal with the story, the way that she takes a character reacting to the past. She she is who she is because of the past and has become who she is by reacting to it in the same way that the musical scores do at the time too. And we can see that the music is pulling out those emotions through her. She's experiencing them almost at this all the same time too. Well, and it's it's kind of masterful, right? So we cut back to the present and we see that she's wearing all black, which is a direct contrast to in her memories when she was wearing all white, had the calm water around her. Black and white are opposites of each other is how I think about it. So that kind of paints a picture of maybe her feelings too, positive and negative. Yes. And I would also argue that a lot of what this piece is is incompatible parts. You cannot, if you had a white paint and a black paint, you cannot mix them together without creating gray. Two opposites that once mixed together are either destroyed or become something totally different is a theme that I would argue for this piece. Yeah, and I think we can kind of see that she's writing about her real life into this piece, that her two parts of her life, herself and her significant other, are not mixing well. And Gray is not something that is satisfactory to her. Right. She's failing to communicate with Luis is one of the ongoing things where we have quotes from her saying, unconsciously, he would turn away from her in his sleep, just as she unconsciously sought her husband's shoulder all night long, searching for his breath, groping blindly for protection as an enclosed and thir- thirsty plant bends its tendrils towards warmth and moisture. So how does Brigida look at men, would you say? I think the way that Brigida looks at men is she doesn't understand them. She can't communicate with them. She's trying to do one thing. They're doing the complete opposite of what she expects them to do because not what she would do. Yeah, and what's interesting is her view is I feel like she doesn't blame them and she doesn't blame herself. It's just she can't communicate with this Luis, this this man in her life, and it's just a fundamental difference the two of them have is how I've is, is how I've painted it. I have the quote here where she says, Maybe life for men was based on a series of established and continuous customs, which is true for, for humanity, right? Like we all like patterns. But I like the way it's even phrased where she says, Maybe life for men. So she is painting her view of what this man's life is. And it may or may not be that, but it, it, it's she's giving a very honest reaction to how she feels when she's not able to connect with this man. Yeah, and I kind of understand that. What I struggled with is, how could you even get to this far in a relationship with not truly understanding someone? Well, I think, okay, well, here, here's a good question. So there's another quote, when you reach my age, you become a slave to a thousand obligations. Now, Ooh. As a father, I will say my relationship with my wife has changed over the years from when we were first dating and there was a lot of uncertainty in in terms of, you know, what's going to happen? Is this the right person for me? Everybody goes through different, you know, reactions and emotions. Maybe you were a love at first sight person, but then we became married and we transitioned at that point in terms of how we connected with each other. There's a lot more security, a lot more safety. Today, we still have that security and safety, but then you add on that we have a son now, right? And again, that's another obligation that's coming into our lives. And on top of that, now we have, at the time of recording, we have this COVID pandemic that's happening. I have obligations now of trying to do things a lot more remote than I didn't used to. So life is constantly throwing new things, jobs, kids, things like that. Uh, familial things, maybe family members need help, that it will change. You're in, your relationship isn't in a bubble, right? As much as you're like me and my wife's relationship, that's not really what it is. You and your wife's relationship exists in a bubble amongst cultural and societal pressures, and you have obligations to other things that will take away dedication and time to your significant other, I feel like is what she's acknowledging. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. I also think about with Birgitta, she seems to be taking kind of emotion out of here as well, and only the music can bring that out in her because she's saying that there's a thousand obligations and she's driven by these decisions in life without seeming emotion being a context to it at all. Uh, and there's all these externalities, of course, that affects relationships and can mold them and change them. But she seems so attached to what I have to do and what he should be doing and that they're not in sync with those two ideals. I wonder if, if you remember in the beginning of the story, she didn't connect with her father either, right? So it's not just Luis. It's other, it's, I don't want to say it's men versus women, but you see Brigida is having problems challenging with the two men in her life. Like her father, she didn't connect with either. And you'll notice she didn't get a formal education. She wasn't taught the scales. She wasn't taught how to logically understand music, like the way her six older sisters had, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so, so she is forced to emotionally absorb music as opposed to logically break it down to your point. Yeah, it's just really sad because I feel like that it's not her fault, but she's the one that suffers as a result for this, not a broken relationship, but just a a gray relationship, for lack of better words. Well, I, okay, so the opposites don't just end there with the black and white. You'll notice in terms of fire, we had references to fire dancing in the fireplace. We had lighting the oil lamp. We had the burning references to fall coming upon Water was in almost every scene in terms of water drops hitting the ceiling. We had canals, rivers, the gummy tree buffeting the storm. We had water coming down the eyes. What is fire and water? Those are two incompatible substances as well, for the most part, right? You have too much water. The water is going to overpower the fire. You have too much fire. It's going to burn up the water. Again, two substances, just like water, just like um, white and black, just like in this story, the husband and wife that are not compatible and cannot be reconciled. Yeah. And I feel like it does a good job of like giving you that kind of sensory overload. So you kind of feel and sympathize with her of all these incompatibilities as it just, it's, it's bombarding you with all of this, uh, feelings of, Oh, touch and smell and taste. You can really kind of get into this with her. I I love it. It does a great job. It's a very sensorial story. And I feel like, too, that the water by her when she was in the canal when she was younger, the water buffeting the gummy tree when when she was in her bedouin or boudoir, and then also even when in her room it was described as an aquarium. So water is almost being associated with femininity in this piece, too, that, that it's not just random sensorial things being thrown at you. This is constructed to specifically associate certain feelings with specific colors, with specific uh, incompatibility devices, too. I, it's really well constructed for a six, seven page story. Yeah. Would you think that the white represents purity is going to be the femininity and, and black with masculinity here as well to kind of go along with the the fire and water the white and black's more complicated right because she wore white in her younger age when she was innocent and then black after all the the issues the Luis wouldn't tell what his hair color used to be but it wasn't yeah. white it was gray it turned gray at 15 which i think is also speaking to maybe that he started taking on more adult like responsibilities you know that's why he was constantly obsessed with work at a young age yeah you could also think maybe that this is something that uh is being written into the story from a personal young woman being pushed into things that she doesn't want to Okay, okay. Now, what about the tree? Did you have much symbolism with what the tree meant in this? Yeah, the the tree is a a tricky viewpoint, I think. There's a lot of imagery and symbolism in the tree, but I believe that it is the shield that is protecting her. I I can see that. I can also see it being something that separates her, too. Like, a shield also separates you, too, right? To look at it from a different angle, that it was her shield from the storm, right? And storms represent uncertainty it represents oncoming calamity if you will like which happened in the story in terms of the the separation coming onto her but it can also represent protection to your point too where where it's shielding you from the the uncertainties and unknowns of life and it is only once to to the point of this this specific story it was only once the tree was cut down that she was completely surrounded by light and allowed to live back in life I don't think it was necessary Luis was suffocating her. 
I think it was the relationship. So I wonder if you can view the tree as the strife or the differences that maybe these two had and the differences of the tree is what was separating them in their relationship. And it was only once it was cut down and she was set free, like like the birds that used to live in it now moved on to live to other things, she was finally allowed to live and breathe her own life and be her own woman. Yeah, it kind of makes me think of a security blanket that at first it helps you, but then it becomes restrictive in your life. Mm. And I'm going to embarrass my sister here that <laughs> when she was little, she had uh, like a binky or the little thing, you know, you put in the mouth for a kid. Mm-hmm. And she had that thing way past when you're supposed to have it. She was like three. And mm-hmm. I just got tired of it one day and I took it and I hit it and she was fine without it. But it was that security that she had to have. But it was also limiting her because she wouldn't talk because she mm. had something stuffed in her mouth. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, it was both a good and a bad thing. And I think the tree can kind of be viewed as that as at first it protects her, but then it restricts her also. Sometimes we need that loving and guiding hand. And to that point, the epigraph, it was dedicated to her friend, to a great artist, Nina Anguita. Antigua? Oh. Anguita. A wonderful friend who gave life and reality to my imaginary tree. I dedicate this story to that without realizing it. I wrote for her even long before I knew her. So I have a lot of questions here too of like, what was Nina to this author's life? Was she the tree for her? And was this the, was was she the one that protected her or almost shielded her in a sense? And is this tree meant to represent something that she brought to her life? Was she a musical influence on her? Very interesting way to have kicked off the story, if you ask me. Yeah, and to give that kind of praise, but also if we think about what the tree was, you're also thinking she may be laying a little bit of blame of that you Mm. were great to me, but Mm. I also needed to let you go to be free and be myself. Right. Very deep. Mm, very interesting very interesting the shield and the knight in armor not always what it cracked is cracked up to be now mr (laughs) mr crypto let's move into our ratings what are you going to give this one uh for this one i think that it's a fantastic story i love the symbology i love all of the sensory stuff it gave me it is tough to get a little bit you do have to do some work for this one so for both uh my critique and my personal enjoyment i'm going to give this one a solid 7.5 because it you do have to do some work beyond what is just very superficial, but it's some good stuff there. I can easily see, I mean, if you think about this being six, seven pages with the past influencing the present, the incompatible colors and devices and imagery that she uses, the sensorial inputs that she puts on this main character, this is super packed, super rich with things to break down. I'm gonna say analytically, this is actually really high for me, like a nine, to be frank, this was hard for me. I don't know if this, this impacted me emotionally on an, an emotional level from an initial read. This actually was probably more like a five for me on just a personal enjoyment level. So I'm going to average that out to about a seven overall. Yeah, because this one is something that we both had to read two times. And in doing so, we got more out of it. But that's a lot of investment Yeah, for a six-page yeah. story. There, I love how ambitious it was. For some reason... It was so ambitious that it was kind of hard for my brain to to make it work just from an enjoyment standpoint. So Maybe it wasn't firing on all cylinders. Yeah. I know there's not watering on all cylinders either. (laughs) All right, guys. Uh. Thank you for checking out our discussion here today. Hopefully you had some fun. Let us know what you guys thought of this story if you have been reading this or have been following along for our Latin America Heritage Month please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're down for more literature discussions like we had here today. Una out. Peace.